Welcome back to Computer Networks, a systems approach, chapter one. We're now up to slide 23, looking at uh, the OSI and internet uh, layered network architectures. So we're starting with the, uh, the OSI architecture. Um, this is a seven layer model uh, that is very well known. Um, not that many systems actually probably implement something like this anymore uh, because the internet architecture uh, layered model really has kind of uh, you know, taken over uh, as the dominant kind of model. But this was a, uh, a very important model uh, in the history of network, layered network development and is still used as the reference model uh, by people when they're looking at, uh, at creating new models. So as we see, there are seven layers in there. Uh, at the very bottom, we have the physical layer. So this is concerned with how we actually, uh, at the most simplest level, communicate uh, between devices. So this will be things like the electrical interface, if it's on a wired thing, or you know the uh, the waveform and frequency and all those sorts of things, if it's uh, a wireless transport. And then the data link layer immediately above that is to do with the framing of information. So at this level, we end up with um, data frames. Uh, and so on Ethernet, for example, this will actually be you know the Ethernet frames. It's kind of the things that we'll then later at higher levels think about as packets or pieces of information. So instead of it just being signals going down the wire, we're saying how do we interpret those signals to actually be discrete digital pieces of information? Then at the network layer, we have the ability to move data uh, between not just end to end on a, a single link, but to actually be able to do it through indirect uh, connections. So again, on the, uh, the slide here, we have that uh, central section where we're showing sort of, you know, going through the cloud, through the internet, uh, that we have these three layers in there. And in fact, actually for uh, network switches and those kinds of devices, that's all that actually needs to be implemented. This is the host to host protocol um, section is the bottom three layers of OSI. The transport layer provides uh, the kind of, you know, uh, uh, process to process communications that we talked about earlier. Uh, so this is the, you know, the addressing from uh, one application to another application uh, at that kind of level. And then at the top level, we have um, session presentation and application. And so this is, you know, the bottom four are actually quite similar, uh, usually on, on different uh, systems. And it's above that, that we tend to get the, uh, the differentiation. So the application layer is typically there in most. Uh, so this would, for example, be, you know, HTTP uh, on the top or some web streaming uh, kind of application at the top level. Uh, and so that tends to be there. Presentation tends to be absorbed into application these days. So presentation is, for example, uh, how many bits uh, in a data word? Are we using 16, 32 or 64 bit integers, for example? Are they signed? Are they unsigned? Are they sent least significant or most significant byte first? Which order are the bytes sent in? Um, and again, this tends to be uh, largely dealt with uh, in the application layer uh, on modern networks. <coughs> and in fact, actually, um, in a lot of networks, like on IP, it's largely standardized to say, this is the set uh, field widths and this is the set byte order so that we actually don't need uh, the bulk of the functionality of the presentation layer. And then the session layer is really kind of about tying together uh, you know, everything that's happening. So for example, for audio streaming, you've got or video streaming, rather you have the audio and the video stream coming through separately. And it might be the session protocol that actually organizes to establish those two connections and make sure that they stay in sync and, and those sorts of things. So that's the seven layer OSI model. And where's my mouse gone? Right. Uh, and so we've just spoken to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Yeah, so once we get up to the, oops, uh, the names of the data units change. So as we said, at the data link layer, um, it becomes a frame of information. At the network layer, we have packets of information that are being switched across the network. And then at the transport layer and above, um, it now becomes a message between two applications that's being sent through. Uh, and so those terminologies will tend to apply in other systems as well. So on the internet, uh, as we'll see as well, we have uh, a similar kind of thing. And we've already said that transport and high layer only operate on the end nodes that are running applications rather than on each of the intermediate network nodes uh, that are only relaying like a network switch or a router, for example. Okay, so in comparison, 
uh, the internet architecture is a little bit simpler. Uh, but to understand the internet, we need to have a look at the, uh, you know, from a user perspective, uh, the kind of the way that this works. So we have the application layer, um, and it can be a little bit cross domain, uh, cross um, layer design. So the OSI model is a very strict layering. Each layer does exactly one thing. On the internet, it's a little bit more pragmatic. Um, an application can access TCP and UDP as the highest layer uh, protocols below the um, the application that are uh, that are there, or it can directly actually send IP frames. So this allows applications to implement new protocols above the IP layer and below the application layer without needing for the system to actually be upgraded or changed. So this is again one of those you know, powerful flexibilities uh, of the internet that's actually made it quite successful. Um, and so of course below TCP or UDP, so that's the transmission control protocol for streaming data and UDP for uh, you know, packet based uh, data transfer or exchange. Uh, we have IP, the internet protocol. So this is actually doing the host to host piece um, of actually allowing uh, packets to be routed between any IP hosts on the network. And then at the very bottom, we have the, set, uh, the subnet, uh, subnetwork layer, where we actually have the different networks that are involved uh, and allowing those to, uh, to interoperate and for this, you know, the, the direct link layer kind of communications. So subnetwork can be called uh, link uh, in this context. And so different kinds of services will tend to use different, um, to choose TCP or UDP depending on a variety of factors. Um, UDP is used in some very simple protocols because it can make the prog the size of the program can be much smaller. So on very small embedded systems, for example, you might implement TFTP, which is the trivial file transfer protocol in comparison to the normal FTP file transfer protocol. And TFTP works on UDP. So if the embedded system is so simple that it doesn't actually implement TCP, because actually that adds potentially anywhere from 16 kilobytes uh, or more additional uh, memory requirements, uh, typically 64 kilobytes or more additionally, uh, you know, a little eight bit uh, embedded microcontroller system might not have enough memory uh, to implement that. And so they might choose to do something in UDP. Uh, and this was used for a lot of, uh, you know, booting network based terminals uh, early on. And then on the other hand, for things like HTTP for fetching web pages, really you want to abstract away all of that packet sequencing and retransmission uh, stuff and just have a reliable data stream. So of course these applications will use TCP to provide that. But in either case, of course, it's layered on top of IP, the internet protocol uh, that's actually doing the moving of those packets between hosts around the, uh, the internet. And so the internet architecture, we've, as we've said previously, is defined by the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. And in comparison with the OSI model, um, it's a little bit different. As we said, we have, there's this kind of pragmatic approach that doesn't require strict layering. Um, also, there's a very strong focus around the IP as the central layer. Uh, and so you can add different transports below that and you can add different uh, protocols above that quite easily. It's the IP piece, which is actually really key uh, uh, in that. And, <coughs> pardon me. And for the ITF to accept a new protocol uh, in the architecture, you have to go through the process of defining the protocol and you have to actually implement it at least once, ideally more than once, to show interoperable uh, different implementations. And only at that point is it eligible to become uh, part of the internet architecture standard. Uh, and uh, this approach has uh, really helped uh, the internet to have strong interoperability and compatibility uh, as you know, new advances have come out. So it's, it's proven to be a very flexible and effective strategy. So. Uh, that's it for the OSI and internet architecture uh, here in this video. Uh, you'll do well to uh, learn, particularly in the OSI model, to learn those seven layers uh, because whichever course you're running, you're almost certain to get questions on those uh, in assessment. Uh, and it's actually just really helpful for you to have that understanding of what an idealized network uh, layer setup would look like. Okay, so that's it. <coughs>
for this video. Any questions, again, chuck uh, comments below and we'll do our best to, uh, to answer those. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.